Hello, kindergarten artists. For our last project of this school year, we're gonna do something a little special. We're gonna learn how to make self-portraits all dressed up for graduation. I know this school year was a little bit different and you didn't get to have your graduation ceremony like you normally do, but I thought it would be a great idea to just have a chance to make something a little bit special to remind us of graduation at the end of the school year. So what you need is you're going to need a white piece of paper, any size will work. You need a pencil to draw, an eraser in case you make a mistake, a black marker or a crayon if you would like to outline your picture when you are done drawing, and you're gonna need something to color in your project. I use just simple crayons and markers. They work best for this project, but if you wanna add some color pencils or pastels or paint, that is up to you. Let's get started on our graduation self-portraits. Okay, to get started, you're going to want to take your white piece of paper and turn it vertical, straight up and down, so you have enough room to make your graduation hat and your self-portrait that shows both your head and a little bit of your body. I'm gonna be drawing with a black marker so everyone can see, but of course you should draw with a pencil so that you can erase if you make a mistake. Now we're gonna be making a graduation self-portrait. The term self-portrait in art means making a picture that looks like you. So you want this to look like you. So you're drawing your eyes and your hair and your facial features, not your mom's or your dad's or your brother's or your sister's. A self-portrait is when you just simply draw a picture that looks like you. So we're gonna start actually because our self-portrait, we're gonna be in our graduation cap and gown all ready for kindergarten graduation. We're gonna actually start up top with the hat first before we do the head and the body. So I'm gonna to go towards the top of my page in the middle and I can decide where my finger, where I wanna start. And since I have my little starting point, I'm gonna start by making a dot. Once I have my starting point, we're gonna draw the top of the hat first. It's gonna be like a wide V. I'm gonna go straight on an angle once and twice. Okay, we're gonna turn this into a diamond. So a diamond is pointed. It's almost like a square turned on its side. So I'm gonna make two more angle lines, one and two connect back up at the top. There's the top of my hat. I'm gonna make the bottom of my graduation cap. I'm gonna go right underneath the diamond shape I just made and I'm gonna make a line that comes out once and twice on both sides. And then I'm gonna make a line that curves. You can make it wavy that connects it across. That's the top of my graduation hat. A graduation hat also has that little tassel that hangs off the side. So I'm gonna go back to the middle and I'm gonna color a little circle with my pencil. I'm going to make a curve that comes out sideways, like a little hill. And then I'm gonna make the little fringe at the end of the tassel by coloring some straight lines back and forth. Okay. Now that my graduation cap is done, I can start making the shape of my head for my self-portrait. So I'm gonna go right where the end of my hat is and I'm gonna make a curved U shape that goes down and over to the other side of the hat. Make sure they touch because you want the hat to be on the top of your head. I'm gonna go underneath and I'm going to make the collar, which is the top part, of my graduation gown. So I'm gonna go right on the side and I'm gonna make one U that comes up and make another U that comes back around. We don't have to worry about drawing our neck in the self-portrait because you're gonna be wearing your cap, cap and gown. So you don't have to worry about doing the neck part. Your collar for your gown will cover it. I'm gonna go right at the end where I left off with my collar I'm going to curve down till I hit the bottom of my page. Once, go over to the other side and do the exact same thing twice. Now I have my cap and my gown. I'm gonna go inside the gown 
and make two straight lines spread out for the top of my arms, just like so. Okay, now that I have the basic shape of my head and my graduation cap and gown, now I can start to make this look like my self-portrait. So let's go back to our head. And before we forget, let's add our ears on the sides. So two curves, once and twice. They look like half circles. And I like to put a little curve line for the inside of my ear inside those half circles that I just drew. Now I'm gonna go towards the top of my face and I'm gonna start by making the shapes of my eyes. Now something I like to do when I'm drawing a self-portrait if I can't remember exactly what my eyes or my nose or my hair looks like, I like to maybe look in a mirror while I draw, draw near a mirror or look in one before I begin. A mirror is a great tool to use when you are making a self-portrait. It helps you see up close what your eyes and all of your facial features and your hair, what color they are and what they really look like. So if you have a mirror nearby, you might wanna take a look before you start. Now we're gonna start with our eyes towards the top of our face. And we're gonna make a oval shape for our eyes to begin with. So I'm gonna start by making a curve once and twice. And then I'm gonna curve that line back around to connect it. Once and twice. When I look in a mirror, I'll notice that my eyes, besides the shape of my eyes, has the eyeball that's white, the iris that is colored, and the pupil that is black. So in order to make our eyes correctly, we're gonna do big, medium, and small circles. So I'm gonna start big first, touching the top and the bottom on both sides. Big, medium, medium, and small. The smallest one, is the pupil that is black so I can take my pencil and color that in before I forget so I know later that is meant to be colored black now besides the shape of our eyes we also need to put the details that go with our eyes so if I look in the mirror I'll notice that we all have eyelashes some of us have longer ones some of us have shorter ones but we have eyelashes that we need to draw and above our eyelashes, we have eyebrows. So I'm gonna make a curve once, twice, once, and twice. And of course, I can go back and color those in later to match the color of my hair. So I have my ears, I have my eyes with my eyelashes and eyebrows. Let's go to the center and draw our nose. So everybody draws their nose a little bit different. I'm gonna make mine really simple. I'm gonna make the line that comes down with a curve, almost like a check mark or the letter J. You decide what is best for your nose. Everybody draws different, so whatever is easiest for you. Underneath my nose comes my mouth. So I'm gonna go right underneath and leave a little space. I'm gonna make a nice smile just like so. I could leave it like that. I could make the mouth open if I wanted and make another curve. You could make the lips if you'd like. You decide how you want your mouth to be. Once you have your eyes, your nose, your mouth, and your ears, you may want to take a second look in the mirror and see if there's any details that you're missing from your face. Maybe you have freckles that you wanna add. Maybe you wear glasses and you wanna put the glasses on your face, around your eyes. Maybe you have earrings that you wanna put on your ears. It's up to you. Remember, you're trying your best to make this look like you in your self-portrait. So any details that you need to add so that it looks like you, go right ahead. Once you have your face done, the last thing we need to do for our self-portrait is we need to make our hair. So everybody's hair is different. You are going to make the line that goes with the type of hair that you have. So for example, if you have a straight hair, you're making straight lines. If you have wavy hair, you make wavy lines. I have curly hair, so I'm gonna make a curly line or a loop line. 
So I'm gonna start by putting some underneath my hat on both sides. And then I'm gonna come out towards the edges and make my hair come down to my shoulders. My hair is a little longer, so my curly hair touches my shoulders. If your hair is shorter, you stop. So here's my hair underneath my graduation cap for my self-portrait. Curly hair, I made a curly line. Now everybody's is different, so to give you some ideas, for example, if I were a boy and my hair is much shorter, maybe I just make the hair right underneath the graduation cap sticking out a little bit, and that's it. If I have straight hair, maybe I make straight lines that come down. And if it was shorter, I'd make my hair shorter. I wouldn't come so far, right? And if I have wavy hair, maybe I make my wavy lines come down. You choose whatever lines work for your hair. Remember, you're drawing them underneath in the sides of the graduation cap. We're not drawing on top of our head because the cap covers the head up top. Okay, once you have your self-portrait drawn, you have your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your hair, you have your cap and your gown all done the way you want it to be, you can outline your picture with a black marker or black crayon if you like. If not, you can go right to coloring. Something I like to do before I color, just so I remember what year I had my graduation in. I was in kindergarten or this school year for you guys. I'm gonna write my name and I'm gonna write the school year up top. So I'm gonna write Miss S 2020 and make a little wavy line underneath like a banner. So you guys could write your name and you could write 2020, the year that you were in kindergarten. So it's a little memento so you always remember. If you are done with your portrait, your self-portrait and your name and the year, you can begin to color. Now, when you go to color in your picture, using markers and crayons will probably work best. If you wanna try a different material, that is up to you. When you do color, you have to take a couple minutes and think about what colors you need. So your graduation cap and your graduation gown should be blue. You leave the color white. I like to add a little yellow to the tassel. You don't have to, but it just makes it stand out against the rest. And then for your self-portrait, you have to take the time to think about what colors match your hair and your eyes and your skin. Everybody's skin tone is a different color. It may be brown, black, it may be tan, it may be peach. You have to look through your crayons and see which one matches your skin. When you find it, you use the skin color for your face and for your ears. Remember, your ears are also the same color as your face. And then you have to decide what color you need to match your hair and your eyes. That's why it's always good to look in the mirror because it'll help you know what colors you need before you get started. Take your time coloring. If you want to color in the background, that's up to you. If you want to use a color marker and trace over your name and your year so that it's a different color, that's also your choice. Take your time, work neatly, color completely, and I can't wait to see your kindergarten graduation self-portraits.